Okay. Uh, now, let's go to the constitutional limitations on the power of Congress to enact penal laws. Okay. With respect to the Bill of Rights of the person as guaranteed by the Constitution. Okay. So, the rule power of Congress has a limitation as prescribed or enshrined in the Constitution of the Philippines being the most fundamental law of the land. Okay. So, what are these limitations? First is the Equal Protection Clause. Okay. Next is the Due Process. Next is the non-imposition of cruel and unusual punishment or excessive fines. And then laws relating to bill of attainder and then the ex post facto law. Okay? So, let's discuss further. The Equal Protection Clause. Under Article 3, Section 1 of the 1987 Constitution, it provides that no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall any person be denied the equal protection of laws. Okay? So, um, the Equal Protection Clause contemplates that all laws should be applied equally to a similarly situated um, group or individual, okay? For example, um, the revised penal code applicable to all um, Filipinos and residents and other persons sojourning the Philippines, okay? They are applicable to each and every one, okay? Another equal protection clause for, for example, um, there are laws um, relating to the protection of fishermen, farmers, okay? So, um, it contemplates that laws are equally applicable to that certain type of group or persons, okay? Next is the due process clause. Again, Article 3 of Section 14, Paragraph 1 of the 1987 Constitution provides that no person shall be held to answer for a criminal offense without due process of law. Okay? So, once again, if you say due process, um, the right to be heard, the, the right to present his um, argument or present his or her evidence, okay? And all rights as guaranteed by the Constitution, okay, should be um, given to, to the accused, okay? Next is the non-imposition of cruel and unusual punishment or excessive fines, okay? So, um, this clause contemplates that the punishment must be commensurate to the crime committed, okay? Article 3, Section 19 of the 1987 Constitution provides excessive fines shall not be imposed nor cruel, degrading, or inhuman punishment inflicted. Neither shall death penalty be imposed unless for compelling reasons involving heinous crime. The Congress hereafter provides for it. Any death penalty already imposed shall be reduced to reclusion perpetua. Okay? So, as of this moment, um, death penalty here in the Philippines is suspended. Okay? However, um, crimes uh, which the penalty is death must be reduced to reclusion perpetua. Okay? Or life imprisonment and so on and so forth. Next are acts prohibiting the imposition of death penalty in the Philippines. So, this is the law suspending death penalty in the Philippines, RA 9346. So, this is an act prohibiting imposition of the death penalty. Repeal the law imposing lethal injection or RA 
8177 and the law imposing death penalty or RA 7659 section 1. So this act also imposes punishment of reclusion perpetua for offenses under any act using the nomenclature of the revised penal code and the punishment of life imprisonment for offenses under any act which does not use the nomenclature of the revised penal code. So most, uh, more often than not, class, um, cases uh, which violates the revised penal code, um, the highest penalty is reclusion perpetua. Okay? How about um, in special laws where there is a special corresponding penalty? So the highest penalty will be life imprisonment. Okay? Next limitation is the Bill of Attainder. So, under Article 3, Section 22 of the 1987 Constitution, it provides that no ex post facto law or Bill of Attainder shall be enacted. So, what is the definition of a Bill of Attainder? So, it is a legislative act that inflicts punishment without trial. Okay? Um, it contemplates... Um, imposing a penalty without due process of law. Its essence being the substitution of legislative fiat for a judicial determination of guilt. Okay? So, the Bill of Attainder class is not just prohibited. Okay? It is abhorred by the Constitution. Next limitation is the ex post facto law. Okay? So, under Article 3, Section 22 of the 1987 Constitution, it provides that no ex post facto law or bill of attainder shall be enacted. So, what does ex post facto law mean? So, the following constitutes ex post facto law. Uh, first, it makes criminal an act done before the passage of the law and which was innocent when done and punishes such an act. Okay? So, in simple terms, this is the retroactivity of penal laws. For example, um, there is a new law which was um, passed by Congress. It is illegal to carry a bullpen. Okay? This is just for discussion purposes. So, if you carry a bullpen, then you will be liable with respect to the law. Okay? So, when you apply it retroactiv retroactively, so, um, it is considered an ex post facto law. So, everybody is carrying a bullpen before the passage of the law. So, if you apply it retro retroactively, so, it means that all are liable before the passage of the law. So, it is considered an ex post facto law which is um, prohibited under the Constitution. Okay? Next, it, it aggravates a crime or makes it greater than it was when committed. Another, there is an existing law and then um, you pass another law to aggravate the crime. Okay? It makes the crime heavier when, uh, wa when, even when the time it was committed, the penalty is already heavier. So, remember our last discussion, laws must be prospective. Okay? Um, they can be retroactively applied if and only if it is favorable to the accused. Okay? Because the reason... Um, the constitutional guarantee of presumption of innocence. Next, changes the punishment and inflicts a greater punishment than the law annexed to the crime when committed. Okay? You use a bullpen. There's a law against it. You used a bullpen. However, when you violated such law, another law was passed that you must be imprisoned for 20 years. So, again, an ex post facto law. Next, alters the legal rules of evidence 
and authorizes conviction upon less or different testimony than the law required at the time of the commission of the offense. Next, assumes to regulate civil rights and remedies only in effect imposes penalty or deprivation of a right for something which when done was lawful. Lastly, deprives a person accused of a crime some lawful protection to which he has become entitled such as the protection of a former conviction or acquittal or a proclamation of amnesty. Okay? Um, classic example, double jeopardy. So, if you are prosecuted uh, with regards to violation of the revised penal code and your case is dismissed, then you are, then the uh, prosecution is barred to prosecute again on the on the same issue. So, that is the doctrine of double jeopardy. So, if you remove that protection, there is a law removing that protection, then it is an ex post facto law which is considered prohibited okay, under the Philippine Constitution. Next, other constitutional limitation. Okay, the law must not provide imprisonment for non-payment of debts or poll tax. Okay? It's very basic that um, debt is not a criminal offense. Okay? Next, must not restrict other constitutional freedoms like due process, religion, free speech, and assembly. Basic maxims in criminal law. Actus non facit rium, nisi means sit ria. So, this is a Latin term which means the act cannot be criminal where the mind is criminal. Okay? I mean not criminal. So, the act cannot be criminal where the mind is not criminal. Okay? One element in violation for uh, mala and cases or cases within the purview of the revised penal code is intent. Okay? That is why um, in law, if there is no intent, then there is no crime. Okay? So, this is just a legal maxim, but it is uh, disputable. So, there's a case. We'll discuss cases later. Another uh, Latin maxim is actus me in vito, factus non es mius actus. Or an act done by me against my will is not my act. Okay? So, for example, if there is force and intimidation... It can be used as a valid defense to escape liability. Next, el que es causa del causa es causa del mal causado. Which means, he who is the cause of the cause of the cause of the evil cause. Okay? So, this is the doctrine of the proximate cause. So, ultimately, the person who is the proximate cause is the one liable okay so this is the rationale in paragraph 1 of article 4 which enunciates the doctrine of proximate cause okay so he who commits an intentional felony is responsible for all the consequences which may naturally and logically result therefrom whether foreseen or intended or not okay so, if you are the cause, if you are the proximate cause, even if the result is not intentional, the person died because of your um, acts, then you can be held liable. Okay? Um, you can be held liable for homicide even though it's not your intent to commit homicide. Okay? And so on and so forth. Now, Let's go to chapter 2, felonies, okay, or crimes, okay, felonies, otherwise known as crimes, okay, in um, ordinary parlance. So, we will discuss under felonies the preliminary matters, classification of felonies, elements of criminal liability, the impossible crime, stages of execution, 
conspiracy and proposal, multiple offenders, and then complex crime and special complex crimes. Okay? So, let's differentiate felonies, offense, misdemeanor, and crime. Okay? Felony refers only to violations of the revised penal code. So, any violations in the revised penal code, uh, you term it a felony. A crime punishable under a special law is not referred to as a felony. Crime or offense are the proper terms. Okay? So, there are certain provisions in the revised penal code where the term felony is used. Which means that the provision is not extended to crimes under special laws. Okay, so um, if the basis of the violation is the special law, then the term must be used is crime or offenses. Okay, however, if the basis uh, in defining the crime and punishing the person is the revised penal code. Then uh, use the word felony. Okay. Example: Article one one sixty of the Revised Penal Code, quasi recidivism. A person who shall commit a felony after having been convicted by final judgment, before beginning to serve sentence or while serving the same, shall be punished under the maximum period of the penalty. Okay. Um, as you can observe, the word felony is used. So, if there are violations um, respecting a special law, then quasi-recidivism, uh, Article 160, or the principles of quasi-recidivism cannot be applied. Okay? Because uh, the word used is felony. An offense means a crime punished under a special law is called a statutory offense. Okay? Statutory is another word for law. Statute. Misdemeanor is defined. It is a minor infraction of the law, such as a violation of an ordinance. Okay? Crime is defined as whether the wrongdoing is punished under the revised penal code or under a special law. The generic word crime can be used. Now, felonies, how committed? Article 3 of the Revised Penal, penal Code. Okay, So, acts and omissions punishable by law are felonies. Okay? All uh, violation of the Revised Penal co Code are termed felony. Felonies are committed not only by means of deceit, dolo, but also by means of fault or culpa. Okay? So, when you say fault, there is negligence, um, lack of foresight. Okay? So, there is deceit when the act is performed with deliberate intent. Okay? So, intent being an important element of felony. And there is fault when the wrongful act results from imprudence, negligence, lack of foresight, or lack of skill. So, let's um, define intentional felony versus culpable felony. Okay? So, when you say intentional, there is malice in the act of the person. So, when you say culpable, there is no malice, okay? Because there is only negligence, lack of foresight, um, lack of skill, okay? Um, intentional, there is deliberate intent, okay? Your thoughts are malicious. On the other hand, in culpable felony, injury caused is unintentional, being just an incident of another act performed without malice okay intentional has intention to cause an injury culpable wrongful act results from imprudence negligence lack of foresight or lack of skill okay so how is criminal liability incurred 
Article 3 describes the manner of incurring criminal liability under the revised penal code. Okay, when you say incur, um, violate, perform. Okay, so intentional felony versus culpable felony. It means performing or failing to do an act when either is punished by law, by means of deceit, with dolo, or by means of culpa, or with fault. So, if you if your acts, okay, has an element of dolo or element of culpa in the performance of that act, then it is deemed that you have committed a felony. Okay, you can be prosecuted for said act. Um, example, you are driving a car and due to your negligence or your lack of skill, you injured a person. So, uh, you are the proximate cause of the injury of the person. So, with that, you are liable. Okay, you have incurred um, criminal liability. So, it is important to note that if the criminal liability arises from an omission or when you say omission non-performance okay not doing something such as misprision of treason or abandonment of helpless persons there must be a law requiring the performance of such act okay so in paragraph 1 of article 4 the law uses the word felony that whoever commits a felony incurs criminal liability under paragraph 2 of article 4 it provides and then it provides and makes a person liable even if the accomplishment of this crime is inherently impossible okay article 6 also provides for liability for the incomplete elements of a crime okay uh, remember there are stages in the accomplishment of crime Attempted, um, prostrated, consummated. And then there are certain felonies committed by conspiring in or proposing the commission of certain acts. The principle behind this can be found in Article 8, okay, or conspiracy to commit a crime. Next is plural crimes, on the other hand, are discussed under Article 48 of the Revised Penal Code. Okay, we'll discuss that later. Now, let's go to the requisites of dolo or malice. First, the, per the perpetrator must have freedom while doing an act or omitting to do an act. Okay, so the perpetrator um, was not intimidated, was not forced. Okay. Um, there is freedom in the performance of the perpetrator. Next, he must have intelligence while doing or meeting an act. Okay, so the perpetrator must be of sound mind. Okay, he must have um, control of his senses. Okay, for example, if the person who committed the crime is crazy, then the proceedings can be suspended. Um, e, until the person will have lucid intervals. Next, he must have intent while doing omitting the act. Okay, like, like what I said earlier, intent is an important element in the commission of the crime. Okay, so intent, which is a mental process, presupposes the exercise of freedom and the use of intelligence. If an act is proving to be unlawful, then intent will be presumed prima facie. Okay? So, of course, intent being um, present only in the mind, you must prove intent through evidence. Okay? So, an honest mistake of fact destroys the presumption of criminal intent, which arises from the commission of a felonious act. Okay? So, general versus specific intent. In some particular fel felonies, proof of specific intent is required. In certain crimes against property, there must be intent to gain. Okay? 
So under Article 293, robbery, Article 308, theft, okay, of the revised penal code, um, there must be intent to gain, okay, as an element of the crime. And then intent to kill is essential in attempted and frustrated homicide. Article 6 in relation to Article 249 of the Revised Penal Code. As well as in murder. Okay, so there is intent to kill in this um, felony. And then in forcible abduction, Article 342, specific intent of new design must be proven. Okay. Now, let's go to the requisites of culpa or fault. First, he must have freedom while doing or omitting to do an act. Once again, there is freedom on the part of the um, perpetrator. Next, he must have intelligence while doing the act, omitting to do an act. Okay, The perpetrator is of um, sound mind. Next, he is imprudent, negligent, or lacks foresight or skill while doing the act or omitting to do an act. Okay? So, um, like what I have given earlier, I, I have given an example with, with regards to the um, driving a motor vehicle and then you injured someone, then all the requisites of culpa is present. Okay? So, you can be held liable for said um, violation or injury. Now, let's discuss Article 5 of the Revised Penal Code. Okay? So, the duty of the court in connection with acts which should be repressed but which are not covered by the law and in cases of excessive penalties. So, whenever a court has knowledge of any act which it may deem proper to repress and which is not punishable by law, it shall render the proper decision and shall report to the chief executive to the Department of Justice, the reasons which induce the court to believe that said act should be made the subject of legislation. Okay. In the same way, the court shall submit to the Chief Executive to the Department of Justice such statement as may be deemed proper without suspending the execution of the sentence. And when a strict enforcement of the provisions of this code would result in the imposition of a clearly excessive penalty the taking into consideration the degree of malice and the injury caused by the offense. Okay? So, under this article, um, the judiciary. So, in the Philippine setting class, um, the government is divided into three branches. Okay? The executive branch, uh, which is headed by the president, Okay, and the uh, lo local chief executives like mayors, governors, president. Okay, next is the legislative branch. Okay, where rulemaking power is vested, um, composed of the lower house, which is the house of representatives, and the upper house, which is the senate. And then lastly is the judiciary where the power to interpret the law is vested. So led by the Supreme Court of the uh, led by the Chief Justice, okay, of the Supreme Court of the Philippines and other judges are also included in the um, judiciary. So Article 5 covers two situation. Where the court cannot convict the accused because the act he committed is not punishable under the law, but the court deems it proper to repress such act. So, the proper judgment is acquittal. Okay? The judge must report to the chief executive that said act be made subject of penal legislation and the reasons thereof. So, under Article 5, so if there is law, uh, if there is no law, uh, with respect to a certain act. However, the judge uh, believes that there should be law against that act. So, the proper thing to do by the judge is to acquit the accused because there's no basis for his liability and then submit to the, check ex to the chief executive um, proposals that 
said act should be subject to penal legislation, okay? And also, the judge must write the reason thereof. So, where the court, after trial, finds the accused guilty, and the penalty prescribed for the crime appears too harsh, considering the conditions surrounding the commission of the crime, then the judge should impose the law, okay? Not suspend the execution of the sentence. However, the most he could do is to recommend to the chief executive to grant executive um, clemency. Okay? For example, um, there's already a law against a certain act. However, in the mind of the judge, he believes that um, such penalty is excessive okay? uh, with respect to the act, then um, the accused the judge should impose the law, okay? The judge cannot do anything because that's, that's the job of the judge to impose the law. However, um, what the judge can do is that after imposing the law, he can recommend to the chief executive that the accused be granted executive clemency, okay? Or pardon, Next, wrongful act different from that intended. Okay, so this is a situation. There was an, uh, you committed an act. However, um, the result was not the one you intended. Okay, for example, um, you, you scared a person. Okay, as a joke. However, uh, due to the fear, the person jumps and then fell and then died so the result of which you are still liable so when a person commits a felony with malice he intends the consequences of of his felonious act okay so article 4 of the revised penal code uh, provides for criminal liability sh shall be incurred by any person committing a felony or delito Although the wrongful act done be different from that which he intended. So the rationale is based on the legal maxim. El que es causa de la causa es causa del mel causado. Okay? He who is the cause of the cause is the cause of the evil cause. So that is the doctrine of proximate cause. Your action is the approximate cause of the death of the victim. So you are equally liable even though it is not your intention to commit so grave a wrong. Okay. So there are requisites in order to apply this um, principle. First, an intentional felony has been committed. Okay. So you committed a crime. There was intent to commit that crime. So the felony committed should be one committed by means of dolo or with malice, okay? With deceit. Because Article 4, para Paragraph 1 speaks of wrongful act done different from that which he intended. Next, the act should not be punished by a special law because the offender violating a special law may not have the intent to do an injury to another, okay? Remember our discussion earlier? Intent is immaterial um, with respect to mala prohibita cases or cases arising from special laws, okay? Next, no felony is committed when first, the act or omission is not punishable by the revised penal code and then the act is covered by any of the justifying circumstances enumerated in Article 11. Okay? So the wrong done to the aggrieved party be the direct, natural, and logical consequence of the felony committed by the offender. So the proximate cause. That cause which in a natural and continuous sequence, unbroken by any efficient intervening cause, produces the injury without which the result would not have occurred, okay? So, when you say proximate cause, the reason behind 
of the result. Okay? It is continuous. It is unbroken. Criminal liability exists from the concurrence of the mens rea and the actus reus. Okay? So, when you say mens rea, the elements of the acts, okay, must be present. There is intent, there is freedom, okay, there is the performance or non-performance of an act which is punishable under the revised penal code. So, let, let's give an illustration. Dave and JR are supposed to meet in Audrey's home. But when JR arrived, Dave was not home. JR received an SMS from Dave telling the former to get the house key from the, under the doormat. Dave lets himself in and saw an iPad on the table. JR took the iPad. So, what is JR's criminal li liability? He's liable only for theft and not robbery. Because the intent to gain concurred only with the act of taking, but not with the act of using the owner's key to enter the house. Okay? So, if you are the investigator, or if you are the prosecutor, okay, um, you must examine the situation where the element um, coincides, the element of committing a crime. Okay? Freedom, intent. As you can see in this situation, there was no intent to rob the house, okay? Because um, uh, when JR entered the house, it was lawful because um, there was consent at the part of the owner, Dave, okay? However, when he entered the house, he saw an iPad. So, right there and then, there is already intent to gain, because um, of the thing he saw. There is freedom. Okay. Um, JR is of sound mind. Okay. So there, there is concurrence of the element of the crime of theft. But not robbery. Because there was no force upon things. Okay. So you must examine the elements class. In order to prove. Okay. In order to prosecute um, a certain felony. So, take note, criminal liability for some felonies arises only upon a specific resulting harm. Okay? So, the outcome. For example, homicide and its qualified form requires death of the victim to, the, to be consummated. Okay? So, with respect to homicide, you cannot um, prosecute a person with the crime of homicide, if the victim is still alive, okay? So, there are elements that um, need to concur in order to prosecute a certain crime. Next is estafa. Requires that the victim incur damage for criminal liability for the consummated felony to arise, okay? So, we will discuss case laws later. Now, let's go to um, another principle of law, which is error in personae, okay? So, under the under criminal law, it is a mistake in the identity of the victim, okay? Injuries, injuring one person mistaken for another, okay? So, there is mistaken identity. Under Article 49, penalty for lesser crime in its maximum period, okay? So, there was a mistake on the identity of the victim, but still, you are liable, but the penalty is, for, is lesser. So, at least two subjects. Example, A has intent to kill B, but kill C. So, under Article 3, if A hits C, he should have no criminal liability, but because Article 4, um, his act is a felony. Okay? So, um... Of course, even though there's no intent to kill C because he is not the target, but still he committed the crime, so A is still liable of the outcome because the proximate cause of the death of C is A, even though the intended uh, victim is B. 
Okay? Uh, next principle of law is aberratio ictus. Mistake in the blow. When offender intending to do an injury to one person actually inflicts it to another. Okay? Article 48 on complex crimes, penalty for graver offense in its maximum period. So there is only one subject. The intended subject is a different subject but the felony is still the same. Okay? So there is a mistake in the blow. But again, uh, the resulting um, injury, the perpetrator is still um, liable because of the doctrine of the proximate cause. Okay? Next principle of law is priter intentionem. Okay? Injurious result is greater than that intended. Article 13, mitigating circumstance um, comes into play. If A's act constitutes sufficient means to carry out the graver felony, he cannot claim prior intention name. Okay? So when you say prior intention name, um, the injury was greater though your intention is just to, for example, you just scare the um, person. You punch him. But due to your punch, the person died. So there was no intent to kill. Right? But the injury was greater. So, still, you are liable. Okay? You cannot say, I cannot be prosecuted because there was no intent. But you are the proximate cause of the result. So, you are still liable. Okay? So, proximate cause versus immediate cause versus remote cause. There, there is an illustration here. A, B, C, D, and E. We're driving their vehicles along Ortigas Avenue. A's car was ahead, followed by those of B, C, D, and E. Okay? So, when A's car reached the intersection of EDSA and Ortigas Avenue, the traffic light turned red. So, A immediately stepped on his brakes, followed by B, C, and D. However, A was using a cell phone. Therefore, was not aware that the traffic light had turned to red. So, he bumped the car of D. Then D hit the car of um, C, okay? Then C hit, hit the car of B, then finally B hit the car of A. So in this case, the immediate cause of the damage to the car of A is the car of B, right? Because it was B who bumped the car of A. But that is not the proximate cause, okay? The proximate cause is the negligence of A, okay? So, the proximate cause is the negligence of E using his cell phone while driving because it sets into motion the collision of all the cars. So, ultimately, it is um, E who will um, bear everything. A. Now, Let's discuss if the felony committed is not the proximate cause of the resulting injury. So, there is an active force that intervened between the felony committed and the resulting injury. And the active force is a distinct act or fact absolutely foreign from the felonious act of the accused or the resulting injury is due to the intentional act of the victim. Okay? So, the following are not efficient intervening cause. So, what are the effects? The weak or disease physical condition of victim as when one is suffering from tuberculosis or heart disease. So class, even if there is an intervening cause, still the perpetrator is liable because he is the proximate cause. Okay? So, the, so um, this example, the perpetrators are still liable. Example, he bucks the person and then just for fun, but the person died because in this case, he has a heart disease or a tuberculosis. Okay, so still, the, per the perpetrator is liable. Next, uh, example, the nervousness or temperament of the victim as when a person dies in consequence of an internal hemorrhage brought on by the moving about against the doctor's order because of his nervous condition due to the wound inflicted on the accused, okay? Perpetrator still liable. Next, causes which are inherent 
in the victim such as the victim not knowing how to swim mm. the victim being addicted to tuba drinking okay so even though there, there are intervening cause perpetrator is still liable okay so these are examples class you just make a rundown okay like what i said earlier this is just an overview supposed to be um, criminal law is a uh, very long subject it will take months to discuss criminal law okay so in our college of law it is one sem so that is why um, i'm using this reviewer to present to you the overview of criminal law okay as prescribed by um, your training um, this uh, reviewer is not mine okay I, I will state it again this reviewer is from the UP um, law bar operations um, I'm only using this to present the overview of criminal law so thank you UP I'm not claiming anything okay intellectual property goes to UP this is um, using this purely for discussion purposes only okay so thank you UP next omission it is in action the failure to perform a positive duty which a person is bound to do okay so in law uh, there is um, commission there is also omission okay so when you say omission you are bound to do a certain act but you did not and then due to your non-performance okay a crime has been committed or there was injury that is why you are liable under the law so there must be a law requiring the doing or performing of an act okay so under the revised penal code um enumerates the punishable omissions okay article 116 misprision of treason okay maybe you did not um, report treason okay it is considered a violation next article 137 disloyalty of public officers or employees article 208 negligence and tolerance and prosecution of offenses okay so if you are a prosecutor or a police officer and you were negligent you tolerate offenses then you can be held liable um, in this article article 223 conniving with or consenting to evasion article 275 abandonment of person in danger and abandonment of one's own victim article 276 abandoning a minor okay next let's go to classifications of felonies so felonies are classified as follows according to the manner of their commission okay according to the stages of their execution and then according to their gravity other classification according to their count or as to their nature so So let's jump into the first classification according to the manner of their commission so under article 3 they, they are further classified as intentional felonies and culpable felonies okay so when you say intentional there is dolo there is malice there is deceit okay when you say culpable there is mistake there is fault lack of foresight the person is negligent okay lack of skill imprudence and so on and so forth next is according to the stages of their execution so earlier we have discussed that there are stages in the commission of the crime um, there is attempted stage okay frustrated stage and the consummated stage so the classification of stages of a felony in article 6 are true only to crimes under the revised penal code it does not apply to crimes 
punished under special laws. Okay? Um, crimes under revised penal code being mala inse. So, there are stages in the consummation of the crime. However, um, in the other hand, um, crimes punished under special laws, once violated, always consummated. Okay? Put that in your mind. So, there is no attempted stage, no prostrated stage. Okay? By the mere act of execution or doing the prohibited act, you are liable with regards to the special law. However, even certain crimes which are punished under the revised penal code do not admit of these stages. Okay? So, there are exemptions. Related to this classification of felonies as to formal crimes, okay, crimes which are consummated in one instance, example, illegal extraction under Article 213 of the Revised Penal Code, mere demanding of an amount different from what the law authorizes him to collect, will already consummate a crime whether the taxpayer pays the amount being demanded or not. Okay? Material felonies. Crimes that have various stages of execution. And then felonies by omission, crimes which, which have no attempted stage. And then crimes which have no prostrated stage. The essence of the crime is the act itself. So example, in rape, the slightest penetration already consummates the crime. The same is true for arson where the slightest burn already renders the crime complete. Okay? So, the mere act of doing it consummates the crime. So, even if your, uh, if the male did not, there's no penetration, okay, so the penis only touched the vulva, it consummates the crime of rape, okay? Arson, the house was not born, but um, the fire has already touched the house, even if um, there is no damage, it already consummates the crime of arson, okay? And we will discuss that. You can appreciate that later during our discussion um, with different cases, okay? Now, let's go to gravity, okay? The character of gravity. According to their gravity, under Article 9, felonies are classified as grave felonies or those to which the law attaches capital or penalties, which in any of the periods are afflictive. Okay? The penalty are the following, reclusion perpetua, reclusion temporal, perpetual or absolute disqualification, perpetual or, tempor or special disqualification, pension mayor, fine, more than 6,000, okay? So, when you say capital um, punishment, these are crimes involving heinous crimes or grave crimes, okay? Next, less grave felonies or those which the law punishes with penalties which in their maximum period is correctional, okay? Like mission correctional, aristo mayor, suspension, distiero, fines equal to or more than 200, okay? So, when you say this chero class, um, the perpetrator is not allowed to go near the victim within a certain amount of distance. Okay? So, that is this chero. Next, light felonies or those infractions of law for commission of which the penalty is arresto minor or a fine not exceeding 200 or both. Question. Why is it necessary to determine whether the crime is grave, less grave, or light? Reasoning is first to determine whether these felonies can be complex or not, okay? So, if the crime, it is important to de determine gravity because um, it, it can be used as a basis, a standpoint to another crime, okay? So, it can be complex with another crime. So, the prescription of the crime and the prescription of the penalty, so, according to gravity class, there is also a um, prescriptive period. I think um, capital punishment, crimes in involving capital punishment prescribes within 20 years 
upon discovery. Okay? And then, in other words, these are felonies classified according to their gravity stages and penalty attached to them. Take note that when the revised penal code speaks of grave and less grave felonies, the definition makes a reference specifically to Article 25 of the revised penal code. Okay? Do not omit the phrase in accordance with Article 25 because there is also a classification of penalties under Article 26 that was not applied. Okay? Um, for reference class, um, I, have, I will be uploading the codal provision of the revised penal code. Okay? So for reference, just um, read the codal provision. So this classification of felony according to gravity is important with respect to the question of prescription of crimes. Okay, example, if the penalty is a fine and exactly 200, it is only considered a light felony under Article 9. If the fine is, is imposed as an alternative penalty or, or as a single penalty, the fine of 200 is considered a correctional penalty under Article 26. Hence, a less grave penalty. Okay? So, it is important that um, you consider the gravity of the offense. Okay? For purposes of prescription. Okay. So, if the penalty is exactly 200, apply Article 26 with respect to prescription of penalties. It is considered as a Correctional penalty and it prescribes in 10 years. Okay, so correctional penalties prescribes in 10 years. If the offender is apprehended at any time within 10 years, he can be made to suffer the fine. Next, as to count, plurality of crimes may be in the form of compound crime, complex crime, and composite crimes. Okay, as to nature, okay. Uh, we have discussed this earlier, whether it is malaense, okay, malaense, um, cry, uh, felonies committed under the revised penal code, mala prohibita, felonies, uh, crimes committed um, in violation of special laws, okay. So, Article 10, offenses not subject to the provisions of this code. Offenses which are or in the future may be punishable under the special laws are not subject to the provision of this code. This code shall be supplementary to such laws unless the latter should specially provide um, the contrary. So once again, class, um, in a special law, if it is silent, there is a provision on that special law which is silent, then the revised penal code has has a supplementary effect supplementary effect okay now let's go to the elements of criminal liability so elements of felonies so when you say felonies these are crimes committed um, under the revised penal code so first element there must be an act or omission Okay, actus reus or physical act to be considered as a felony. There must be an act or omission. Okay, so act, uh, which means any kind of body movement, which tend to produce some effect in the external world, includes possession. So, performance, there is an act, there is a commission. Okay. Next is omission, the failure to perform a positive duty which one is bound to do under the law, okay? There is non-performance, okay? It is important that there is a law requiring the performance of an act. If there is no positive duty, then there is no liability, okay? Very basic class. Um, in our jurisdiction in the Philippines, there must be a law punishing a certain act. Because if there's no law, then there is no crime. Okay? Examples. Failure to render assistance 
failure to issue receipt or non-disclosure of knowledge of conspiracy against the government. Okay? So, these are omissions class which can be prosecuted. Mans Ria, a guilty mind, a guilty or wrongful purpose, or criminal intent. Okay? So, sometimes referred to in common parlance as the gravamen of the offense. Okay? The very essence. Mans Ria, the essence of the crime. Okay? Bull's eye of the crime. Or the criminal or the deliberate intent. Okay? Mans Ria is a Latin term. For an act to be punishable, there must be a concurrence between the act and the intent. Okay? Earlier, we have discussed that one important element of um, a crime is intent. Another important element is freedom. Another important element is intelligence. And then, another important element is the act itself. So, if there is concurrence of these elements, then there is a felony. Okay? So, that the act or omission must be punishable by the revised penal code. That the act is performed or the omission incurred by means of dolo or deceit or culpa or fault. Okay? So, when you say dolo, a Latin term for deliberate intent. Okay? Um, otherwise, um, other terms are deceit, dolo, malice, dolo, okay? Otherwise referred to as criminal intent, okay? Another term, criminal intent. And must be coupled with freedom of action and intelligence on the part of the offender as to the act done by him, okay? So, liability, even in the absence of criminal intent. There are two exceptions to the requirement of criminal intent, okay? Felonies committed by culpa. So, once again, when you say culpa, committed due to um, negligence, fault, um, lack of foresight, lack of skill, recklessness, imprudence, okay? And so on and so forth. Another offenses... Um, by virtue of mala prohibita or by virtue of special laws, okay? The mere act, the mere act of doing is considered the consummated act, okay? So, intentional felonies. The act or omission is performed or incurred with deliberate intent or with malice to cause an injury to another so once again the requisites are freedom intelligence okay criminal intent okay so um, in this case uh, we'll discuss later case laws okay we'll just make a rundown class because um, the time given to us is just limited and there are still um, topics that we need to cover Okay, don't worry, um, I will upload notes um, in the files for your reference and of course um, for your assignments. Now, let's go to categories of intent. So, there is general criminal intent and in the other hand, there is specific criminal intent. So, under general criminal intent, the intention to do something wrong, okay? There is an intent to do something wrong. And then, presumed from the mere doing of a wrong, the burden is upon the wrongdoer to prove that he acted without such criminal intent. In the other hand, specific criminal intent, the intention to commit a definite act, okay? There is an act. There is... A, Existence is not presumed. And since the specific intent is an element of the crime, the burden is upon the prosecution to establish its existence. Okay? So, there is a 
saying in law that he who alleges must prove. Okay? So, in general intent, it is the accused who alleges that there was no intention to do to do something wrong. So, he must prove. And the, in the other hand, um, it is the in specific criminal intent, the prosecution will prove because he is the one who will allege the specific act. Okay? Now, let's go to the distinction between intent, discernment, and motive. Okay? So, under intent, determination to do a certain thing, an aim or purpose of the mind. Okay? Next, establish the nature and extent of culpability in intentional felonies. Okay? So, under discernment, the mental capacity to tell right from wrong. Integral to the element of intelligence, but not intent. So, when you say intent, it is the purpose, okay? In the other hand, when you say deter discernment, um, it relates to intelligence. Motive, it is the moving power which impels one to do an act. For example, vengeance, okay? Generally, it is not an essential element of a crime, Hence, it need not be proved for purposes of conviction, except in certain cases enumerated below. Okay? So, question. When does motive become material in determining criminal liability? The following are these situations which requires motive to be proven. First, when the act brings about variant crimes, okay, um, plurality of crimes, there are multiple crimes committed, then intent can be used as proof, okay, like there is kidnapping and then it resulted to a robbery also while the person is being kidnapped. When there is doubt as to the identity of the assailant, okay, when there is the need to ascertain the truth between the two antagonistic versions of the crime. When the identification of the accused proceeds from an unreliable source and the testimony is in inconclusive and not free from doubt. Okay, So there is doubt. So motive can be used as evidence. So when there are no eyewitnesses to the crime, when the suspicion is likely to fall upon a number of persons. Next, when the evidence on the commission of the crime is purely circumstantial, okay? So, circumstantial evidence, uh, motive can be included. So, lack of motive can aid in achieving acquittal of the accused, especially where there is doubt as to the identity of the accused, okay? So, generally, motive is not an element of the crime. So, however, motive can be used when the situation arises. Okay? Uh, let's give an example. Ernie came home and found his wife in a pleasant conversation with Bert, former suitor. Thereupon, he went to the kitchen, opened a drawer and pulled out a knife. He then stabbed Bert. So, the moving force is jealousy. Okay? The intent is presumed from the resort to the knife. So, that means he decides to kill Bert, the former suitor. Ernest's deliberate choice of something as little as the knife shows the presence of intelligence because it is very, because it is very awareness of the danger which prompted his choice. This only means that he knew what is right from wrong and del deliberately chose to do what is wrong. Okay, So there is an element of the crime. There is intent, intent to kill. Okay, Another, um, there is freedom. He chose a knife. There is intelligence. He was, he was of sound mind when he, he committed something. Okay? 
Note, discernment does not indicate the presence of intent, merely intelligence. Thus, discernment is necessary whether the crime is dolo or kulpa. Okay? Now, let's go to the mistake of fact or ignorantia facti excusat. It is a reasonable misapprehension of fact on the part of the person causing injury to another. Such person is not criminally liable as he acted without criminal intent. So under this principle, what is involved is the lack of intent on the part of the accused. Therefore, the defense of mistake of fact is an untenable defense in culpable felonies where there is no intent to consider. Okay? Um, intent being an essential element of the crime, um, it must be considered if um, the crime malainse, um, the crime has malice or there is a presence of dulo. However, in um, culpable felonies, uh, intent can't be considered because um, culpable felonies arises due to negligence, imprudence, lack of foresight, lack of skills, and so on. So the defense of mistake of fact is a valid defense in um, cases involving dolo or deceit. Okay? An honest mistake of fact destroys the presumption of criminal intent which arises upon the commission of a felonious act. Um, however, there are requisites for the mistake of fact. Um, if this defense is used, these elements must concur, okay? That the act done would have been lawful had the facts been as the accused believed them to be. That the intention of the accused in performing the act should be lawful. That the mistake must be without fault or carelessness on the part of the accused when the accused is negligent. Mistake of fact is not a defense, okay? So, once again, mistake of fact is a valid defense in prosecuting um, offenses involving dulo, okay? So, I will give an example. Um, a heard something outside. Uh, when he got scared, A got scared, so he prepared a knife. Uh, when B opened the door, he stabbed B. Okay, it was a mis There was mistake of fact in the killing of B, because um, A thought that there was a perpetrator, and then uh, let's put it this way: A was living. Um, in a community where there are crimes, okay? And then due to the joke of B, the intention of B is just to scare A, but A stabbed him because thinking uh, B was a perpetrator, then, of course, mistake of fact, it can be used as a valid defense, okay? So we will discuss it um, further later during case loss okay so culpa or constructive intent although there is no intentional felony there could be culpable felony the act or omission is not malicious the injury cause being simply the incident of another act performed without malice the element of criminal intent is replaced by negligence, imprudence, lack of foresight, or lack of skill. Okay? So, the element of intent is not existent in this um, situation because um, what is contemplated in culpable felonies are negligence, okay? um, lack of foresight, lack of skill. Is culpa merely a mode of committing a crime or a crime in itself? There's a question. So, as a mode under Article 3, it is clear that culpa is just a modality by which a felony may be committed. Okay? So, felony can be committed by virtue of dolo. Okay? When you say dolo, there is malice, there is deceit. Or by virtue of culpa or fault. Okay. 
So as a crime un under Article 365 of the Revised Penal Code, criminal negligence is an omission which the article specifically penalizes. The concept of criminal negligence is the excusable lack of precaution on the part of the person performing or failing to perform an act. Okay? So, Article 365 creates a distinction between imprudence and negligence. Simple or reckless, one might think that criminal negligence is the one being punished. Okay? So, dolo, it is intentional. Um, in the other hand, culpa, there is negligence. Okay? There is criminal negligence. Okay? Requisites. Again, freedom, intelligence, and then negligence. So, these are the requisites of culpa. Okay? Later, we will discuss case laws. Okay? We'll, uh, we'll just finish the overview of the criminal law one. I'm using the um, reviewer from UP. Um, law. This is not my reviewer once again. Okay. Uh, my purpose is just to present the overview of criminal law one. Um, another principle is negligence. Indicates deficiency of perception, failure to pay proper attention, and to use diligence in foreseeing the injury or damage impending to be caused. Usually involves lack of foresight. Okay, so when you say negligence, um, the perpetrator did not um, use okay, um, his senses in order to avoid the damage or injury committed to another. Next is imprudence. Indicates deficiency of action. Failure to take the necessary precaution to avoid injury to person or damage to property usually involves lack of skill. Okay, example, um, you drive a car, but knowing that you're a new driver, uh, the skill was not yet developed, still um, drive the car, and because of your act, you injured another, so you are liable. Okay. Reason for punishing acts of negligence or imprudence. A man must use his common sense and exercise due reflection in all his acts. It is his duty to be cautious, careful, and prudent. Okay? 